Right, now, it's been another incredibly busy week in the royal household. So early Dutch copies of Scobie's poison-filled endgame suggested that Kate, oh, and somebody else as well, were potentially making remarks about uh, Archie's skin colour. But it comes as King Charles has flown out to the COP28 conference and moved some of his critics have said unnecessarily involves him in politics. Has all of this rocked the royal boat even further? I'm joined now by royal commentator Judita De Silva, an editor-at-large at the Mail on Sunday. It is Charlotte Griffiths. Judith, I'll start with you on all of this. Look, how do you think that the, uh, the rules in question are emerging when it comes to this, this race row? Um, it's, it's an interesting one because they've navigated all the napalm that has come as a result of the exodus of Harry and Meghan very well because it's one of those things that it's seen as give it time, people will move on, and it has happened. The issue with this is that since the Oprah interview, it keeps coming back because one of the worst accusations you can level at anyone is mm. to call them a racist. That's why it keeps coming back. So I think it's one of those things that they might find themselves needing to definitively address it some way. But then you have the issue of you cannot have two rogue people yeah decide what the agenda and the way you move is for the royal family. They've got to be greater than that. They've got to be beyond that. So it's a very difficult thing to navigate. And that's why I understand why they say the firm is, is exploring all options. Do you think they should sue? I don't think they should sue, but I think they sort of threatened to, to scare Omid a little bit, but I just don't think they will. And I actually don't think they should. It's too complicated because Charles is the head of the courts, you know, yeah. his, his, his name is on the court documents. Yeah. It would just be too much of a mess. But I think, I think the fact they've let it be known that it's a suable issue is quite good for them because it might calm the whole thing down. Mm, OK. Um, I think public support has actually gone behind. You know, look, I am, I am getting a directive now that it is OK to actually say what was in this book, which is, I think, actually probably for the best, because everyone really knows as well, don't they? But it was clearly Kate and Charles, who were the two royals, who were suggested were the ones who made that uh, comment about Harry and Meghan's first child, Archie, which actually, to be honest with you, frees up this conversation. Um, do you think that Kate's popularity will take a hit from this at all, or, or, or there's no sign of it, is there? I think until you... The problem, what has happened is Omid Scobie's credibility has been so tarnished, people are not going to die on the cross of what he said. And what, until Harry and Meghan come out and actually make a statement, because mm. this is kind of filtered down from you, allegedly, mm. they're not, no one's going to really want to die on the hill of saying, this is exactly what happened, I'm going for it. And people have come out in the past 24 to 48 hours and said that actually from inside sources, it's not Charles or Kate, it's someone else. Mm. So the, the waters are so muddied right now, no one's going to be willing to lance at Kate and believe that this is the gospel and this is exactly what happened. Mm. It's too unreliable. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is too unreliable. But like you were saying to you there as well, Charles has come out and said he's, he's just about surviving. I mean, this obviously is, a, this would affect anyone's family. Mm. It would affect absolutely anybody's family at, at all. And, and, a little bit later on, I'm talking actually to uh, Nigel Farage's girlfriend, her first ever TV interview. And one of the issues that I addressed with her is you know, these allegations of racism that are levelled against Nigel, for example. If anyone was being accused of racism, it does have an impact to you. And our royal family are not immune to that, are they? No, exactly. And Charles said at COP something along the lines of, you know, I'm just about surviving. And I really felt for him, actually, because this has been levelled at his daughter-in-law, which we can now say, you know, he, he's really fond of his daughter-in-law. He's worked tirelessly to never put a foot wrong, in public at least. And, you know, it's also been levelled at him by his own son. So there's so many layers of betrayal here for Prince Charles. It's just a complete mess. And if I was him, I'd be really gutted. You know, he's just become king and now he's having to face all this all over Well, you, you were uh, giving us a little sneak preview, I believe, anyway, of what might be on the front of your paper tomorrow, or possibly somewhere near it. Yeah, as yeah well. so, uh, Go on. Uh, well, what seems to be emerging is that sources very close to Meghan and Harry have briefed The Telegraph, which we know is one of their favoured newspapers, mm -hmm. and said that they never wanted these two names to come out. And it's a really clever thing to do, and it's an irritating thing to do for the royal family, because they're basically saying, yeah, it is those two, but we didn't want to ever say it was those two. That's interesting. They're not saying, it wasn't my, you know, Harry's not coming out and saying, it wasn't my father, I love my father, he would never do something like this, it was only unconscious bias. He's saying, uh, we didn't want these names to come out like this. That is actually a really fascinating line on this then, because everyone, well not everyone, a lot of people were saying, well you've got to come out and publicly distance yourself from this now. That's what you've got to do if you care about your family and if this isn't true. But actually they've basically confirmed it. Yes, whilst appearing to be saying, 
you know, we didn't want this. We didn't want this. We're such goody two shoes. But actually, yeah, confirming it. Don't you think? That's yeah. quite strong, isn't it? No, because I, um, I did say it like a months ago that when they had the alleged statement saying that we're not going to be talking about the royal family anymore, we want to move on. They've got nothing else. There's no other USP to the Harry and Meghan brand, particularly in America, that's so vicious as to keep to keep their attention. They're going to have to revisit this in some way. But what other ground do you have to cover? This reignites possibly the most column garnering story they have about them. And that statement kind of leans into we're disengaging but still feeding the flame. Mm. And that is very problematic for them because you're not practicing what you preach. No. And also, it's just annoying because it's like doublespeak, isn't it? Yeah. Again, it, re it really is. It's a little bit like you get politicians coming out and say, look, we're doing everything we can with this. And then it emerges that literally the day before they've just pushed through a policy that does the opposite of what they say. Do you think that the public are just going to get absolutely sick of, of Harry and Meghan doing this, of being quite duplicitous, some would argue, in this way? Yeah, I think I think the public are kind of sick of it. I mean, completely sick of it. I think back in back when it originally happened, they said recollections may vary, and then William said we are very much not a racist family, and the world has moved on now. And the fact it's come up again, you know, you, there's the. The, the nation's sort of giving Charles and Kate the benefit of the doubt, aren't they? Nobody, there's no pile on. I haven't seen a pile on. Mm. People are, people have moved on and they're, they're hoping that Charles and Kate aren't racist. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I mean, and, and, that, and that's the hope, I suppose. I wonder whether or not it's going to have a generational issue though. These kind of things stay with you. Yeah. And, you know, the Gen Z type at the moment, the, all you have to do now is go on Google. We saw it again it, a bit in the jungle, didn't we? When Nella was saying, oh, "Well, the internet says you're a racist, mm. Nigel." You know, the internet says you're, you're a racist. Well, this stuff will be all out there on the internet now, and will that have a problem for the royals with the younger generation? I, that's what I said. That this is such one of those unique accusations that you can't walk away from. You have to address it, but they have to navigate how they're going to do it because then you don't want to look that look like Harry and Meghan still pull the strings for how we operate. Mm. But to have racism swirling around the brand, by the time William comes to the throne, it's going to be an issue and people will remember that something that bad came into your circle and you refuse to address it. It's not keep calm and carry on. It's engage, debunk it and prove that it's something that isn't mm. true. Mm, OK. Now, Charlotte, I'd already asked you this, so I'll stay with you for now. Do you think that King Charles was right to go to COP28? Because it's difficult, I think, in this particular moment in time to uh, disassociate the political from the eco. I think he was right to go because he's been an environmentalist since it wasn't even cool to talk about and people would laugh at him mm. and think that this was just a fad. And the fact that he stayed the course means that he has a lot of credibility. And just think about the optics of it, showing the most important people from around the world coming together to discuss this issue is what the Gen Zs have been asking for, is what Greta Thunberg talks about, that you can't just stand to the side and let us deal with the problem when it comes along. Show that it matters to you, take action, and that's what he's doing. I would argue he got involved in another deeply political thing, though, because he was wearing that Greek tie. <laughs> Obviously, his dad was kind of behind the scenes, uh, affectionately known as Phil the Greek, wasn't he? So, uh, that is really political at the moment. It's to do with the Algae Marbles, OK? So, Sunak refused to meet the Greek leader, Keir Starmer met him anyway, then there was a bit of a quotes-unquote hissy fit, which Rishi Sunak denies, about whether or not the Greeks should definitively come out and say the Elgin marbles belong to Britain, but we would like to loan them. I mean, King Charles didn't have to get involved in that, did he? No, but I wonder whether, just being a bit of a conspiracy theorist, he thought he'd just pile on something else that we can talk about that isn't ah. the racism thing. So now we're talking about him being at COP in general, you know, yeah. whether it's political or not. And is he getting involved in the in the Greek debacle? And is that tie really a Greek flag or isn't it? I mean, quite a lot of column, column inches have been dedicated to that well, today. It looks a lot like the Greek flag. And it takes a little bit of space away from the Harry and Meghan yeah. nonsense. It does look a lot like and it. And, and the pocket yeah. square was yeah. Greek as well. It's a bit on the nose, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Conversation. <laughs> Somewhere else. Might as well have come in riding a donkey and smashing plates. You know, <laughs> yeah. I could say that. I'm half Greek, all right? Back off. Now, 